The following program is brought to you by Kevin Shorey Ministries and our family of friends. Well, it's a day after Christmas on most of our stations, and uh, so hope you had a Merry Christmas. And uh, New Year's coming up. I pray you'll have a blessed New Year, that God will bless you. On this day, in a lot of countries around the world, it's called Boxing Day. No, it's not Muhammad Ali, George Foreman stuff. It's all about boxes. And they take their boxes. A lot of the countries, they practice this custom. It's great. America should do it. On Boxing Day, they take the empty boxes that had the presents, and they fill it with candy or food, and they take it to those who are underprivileged. And so I think that'd be a great thing for America. I'm going to start a boxing campaign. But it's, it's Boxing Day, so if, if you're watching from another country or you're from another country, happy Boxing Day. And now we have a great show ahead. Roll it. It's the Kevin Shorey Show, taped before a live studio audience in the Branson Mill in Branson, Missouri. Today, Kevin preaches from the Eagle Heights Worship Center in Springfield, Missouri. And now, don't bring him some figgy pudding. Here's your host, Kevin Shorey. Yay, isn't it a great day to serve the Lord? And wow, what a great Christmas. Oh, I'm full. Uh, you know, I got everything and more. The best thing I have, the best gift is my family. And one of my greatest gifts is knowing I have a family of friends out there Thank you so much. Many of you have let us know by voting with the dollar. I don't have the map. I don't even have Justin today. He's not feeling well today. But I'm telling you, uh, we are so thankful from coast to coast. So people are letting us know that they have voted for the Kevin Shorey Show. We can't wait to go into the new season, into the new year of 2017. So keep it up. If you haven't let us know what state's out there, we've heard from, from Washington State, California, Arizona, Illinois, Indiana, uh, Oklahoma, that was our first one. And so as it's going from coast to coast, uh, be a part of that that number and vote for the Kevin Shorey Show. That's just showing your vote of one. And uh, also those that are becoming our family of friends, we're thankful so much for that. We are we're growing. We have more than doubled since we started a year ago. You know, we went just to a handful of people. Now we have double handfuls. So we have two handfuls. But uh, we're going to continue growing and and preaching the gospel and throwing out the net. Thank you for your 33, the VIP, 333 one-time gift. We're thankful for that. And uh, with that, we want to personally thank you. But you can, when you come to Branson, we'll put you up for a couple of nights, take you to dinner and a show, one of the greatest shows here. There's so many great shows other than the Kevin Shorey Show here in Branson. But uh, we want to say thank you for becoming our family of friends. And uh, the $33 a month is building our foundation. So we not only pay the bills, but we can expand. And my heart is to not only expand and be on TV stations, but to go to places uh, that uh, need to hear the gospel, that need uh, some healing. Uh, if there's fires, if there's a disaster, if there's a shooting, whatever it is, that we could go there. So we're, we really want that foundation of partners family of friends that'll help us to do that and every month we send you a gift just by saying for just to say thank you for giving faithfully every month and uh this month we got the uh christmas mop cloth we got that we're sending to the ladies so you can clean the floor you know and throw it you throw it in the wash and dryer and you can reuse it it's a microfiber great invention velcro wrapped around your swiffer or your broom and we're sending two of the character kids series dvds for your kids grandkids if you don't have any your children's church sunday school here's Here's one, the little train, talks about perseverance. And they all have a, have, a, have a virtue or a lesson for character. Here's a stone in the soup. It's about compassion and friendship. Here's the lion in the mouth. It's about courage and, uh, and caring. And so we'll send you a couple of those with the mop cloth. This is that what's this month's 33. So sign up, become a $33 a month. One thing you do is we get to go uh, around the United States and minister the gospel. And this is one of those. This is a great message. Uh, we even provided snow. Somehow there was like a snow sound of the whole thing but but not too bad i want you to hear the message i'm gonna start off singing a song for you i will not be silent about that silent night and then a word about the three gifts i'll be back on my soapbox after this message for you those are watching on the kevin shorey show we're live here at eagle heights worship center hey 
Let's sing a little bit. I will not be silent about it. I will not be silent. Come on. About that silent night. Why should I stay quiet? About the Christmas light That manger in the town of Bethlehem Should not be kept from sight So I will not be silent About that silent night Two thousand years ago In a stable filled with hay Oh, holy night That changes lives today I cannot be still Cause my Jesus is so real I've got every right to lead others to that babe So I will not be silent, come on, about that silent night Why should I stay quiet about the Christmas light? That manger in the town of Bethlehem should not be kept from sight So I will not be silent, no, about that silent night Gotta tell it on the mountaintops about my Savior's birth. He's the only gift to man of true meaning and of worth. Don't say less, say more. Oh, come let us adore. Jesus is the only one to bring joy to this sad earth. So I will not be silent about that silent night. Hey, why should I stay quiet about the Christmas light? That manger in the town of Bethlehem should not be kept from sight. So I will not be silent. No, I will not be silent. No, 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 I will not be silent about that silent night. Oh, it's easy here. I feel the anointing in this place. It's like the Holy Spirit feels comfortable in this place and abides in this place. You have good preaching and teaching that goes forth from this place. Pastor Don and Psalmist Brenda, my Lord, I'm just honored to be here. I've been looking forward to it so much. Look at Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 2. A good sermon doesn't need to be long, and a bad sermon better not be, so <laughs> I want to give you a word. I'm going to tell you about, not only have CDs, DVDs over there, I have a DVD with some of my friends, uh, Winans, Dottie Rambo, it's all a duet, so it's me singing with all these people throughout the years, Babby Mason, Debbie Boone, <laughs> she lit up my life. Anyway, so, <laughs> not like you, honey, but I'm just saying... Before there was a you, there was a teenage me. <laughs> Let's just say I had her poster. But anyway, it was a good thing. But not only is that out there, but we're excited to be the only ones that have the only one, the only ones to have this a New Testament in first person. It's a good gift. It's good for you to study. It's like Jesus talking to you, telling the story of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John together. It's called "I Am God the Son," and. Uh, uh, that is one for adults, and we have one for kids 12 and under that not only does the same thing, but it does it in anime. So it's in all these beautiful, yeah, I know, right? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. For you or your kids, did you know that it's a fact? Uh, there's an institute in Israel, uh, scientists in Germany, and uh, Jasper Clinic, and then my dear friend who put this together with all of those people saying, it is true that using your cell phones actually boils your blood. It actually changes the blood in your skin when you put it up against your face. Now think about it, those radioactive or m microwaves go through a building to, so you can answer your phone, right? They can go through a building. Don't you think they can go through your body pretty easily? Anyway, they have come up, and this is the proof from all those people I told you about, dispels that from your phone and will not heat up your face or your body at all with this little mineral made sticker that was stuff made from God. He couldn't tell me everything in it. He'd have to kill me. But it works and two come in a box and that is great. That's at the table. I brought some of those. We have so many offers, gifts that we give away to people 
uh, on television, and so there's too much to bring, but I thought I'd bring some of the best that you might want to try for Christmas or for yourselves. How many know there were three wise men that came from the east? No, that is incorrect. <laughs> I like to get you from the beginning. We don't know how many wise men they were. But however many they were, they were wise because they were seeking the king. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem and in Judea, verse 9, Behold, there was a star that they had seen in the east, and they went towards it. Till they came to it, it stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Oh, that the joy of the Lord would come back to our churches again. Amen. Some people are so deep, they drown. Some people are so stiff, they look like they were swimming in Clorox, baptized in pickle juice. But when they saw just the star, they ain't even seen the baby yet. All they saw was the star. But when they saw the star, whew, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they'd come into the house, they saw the, oh, I thought he was born in a barn. Once again, nope. They came into the house, which was probably made inside of a cave, actually. But well, first of all, he was born in the cave when they brought him into the house after he was born, if you know the whole story. And when they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down, they worshipped him. And when they opened the treasures that they had brought gifts to him, this is why people traditionally say there's three wise men, because there was three gifts. Gold, Frankenstein, <laughs> frankincense, and myrrh. The things that we see in the Word of God are never by mistake. I found out that everything has such levels. If I ever get to preach a revival here, you had to hear my revival on the levels of God's miracles because the miracles are not just miracles for God to, um, to do miracles through you to heal people, but they go deeper than that. When he healed blind eyes, he wasn't just healing blind eyes, which he healed more blind eyes than anything else and lame to walk. He wanted people to have the vision of Christ. He wanted people to see things they'd never seen before. It goes deeper to walk into places they'd never been. He says, greater things shall you do in my name. And I'm just scratching the surface. But through all, all those miracles, you find a, different, a, a deeper layer if you go deeper than just the miracle itself. And so it is throughout the whole Bible. A lot of things are done in threes. There's a three, the Godhead. I don't understand it, but I know they're three in one. And, and you know, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. But, but you know what? It's, it's all about Jesus. It's all wrapped up in Jesus. And it's about the name of Jesus. And, and, uh, but in all those things, it's three. He makes us body, mind, and spirit three. So when he wants to give us favor, he wants to show what the King of Kings, how I many know oh, Jesus doesn't need gold, frankincense, and myrrh? He's saying, because of the Christ child... I am giving you the threefold blessing, a favor blessing increase. I'm giving you my blessing through gold, frankincense. We, do, we don't know how many wise men there were, but we know there are three gifts they gave to Jesus. And they are particularly appropriate for their symbolism. One was gold. Gold is for a king. Pure, valuable, nearly indestructible. It's a royal medal. In the ancient world at that time, it was more rare than it is today. Frankincense, gift for the priest, was mixed with oil, used to anoint priests, used to anoint people for atonement and for healing. In Jesus' day, frankincense was used as an offering of thanksgiving and praise to God in the temple. Myrrh. Myrrh was a gift to show forth a foretelling of not only the death of Jesus, but his resurrection. The word myrrh means bitter. And it's the thing that, that, that is bitter that becomes better because of the myrrh. It was used to prepare dead bodies for burial. burial. The corpse was wrapped in layers of cloth and the spices like myrrh were placed between the layers that cover the odor of decay. This foreshadowed, of course, the suffering of Jesus that he would do on the cross. But what does that mean to us today? They brought it to Jesus as a gift to him, probably not knowing that it was anything more than a gift to, to a future king. But to us today, Jesus says, it is how I want to bless you every day. 
Let's start with gold. How many could use a few more pieces of gold in your life? Well, doesn't that mean that the favor of God is there to cause you to prosper as your soul prospers, to bless you as you are blessed, to bless you and not give you a curse, that those who will bless the name of the Lord will receive the favor of God every day? If you need a blessing from God, first of all, uh, if you don't tithe, you're cursed with a curse, so you'll never be blessed. How many tithers do I have in here? Come on, I, we should have 100% tithers. All right. Because if you don't, we can, we can pray that curse away. God can take care of that, and then you can start. But if you, if you walk out with the curse, don't go by my table, shake my hand. I got enough problems. I don't need your curse up on me. But I want you to receive the blessing and the favor of God. And I want every time there's a time to give, if all you've got is the lint in your pocket or the lint in your belly button, to pull it out and give, for it's the heart of God. For God so loved that he gave. That's the very heart of God. He gave his best. Every time there's a time to give. This is not offering time. I'm just telling you now. Every time there is, it's time for you to give. Why? Because when your hand is extended, God can put something in it. It's when it's inside here, mm -mm. how are you going to give you anything? So people always wonder, how could I be blessed? How could God give me favor to, to do this other thing or that, do other thing? Well, have you made sure his kingdom is taken care of first? Because if you seek his kingdom second or third, those things will not be added unto you. But seek his kingdom first. Oh, how we've forgotten to do that. We come to church if there's, if there's a special service or we come to church if they'll sing our favorite song. We come to church if they're going to have a potluck afterwards. And by what I mean, I don't mean no potluck. I mean some gourmet stuff goes on here because I had your macaroni and cheese and your greens. I was blessed. Next time that happens, I'll drive all the way from Branson. I won't even hesitate. But it's more than a potluck or a special service. We should be... Uh, part of the kingdom and what happens in our home church is this your home church is this where you belong if it's not wherever you belong that's where you should be and you should be faithful to it and you should see that that kingdom is built up first hey i said that it seems like all we give it goes into our pockets and there's holes in our pockets and it goes through you ever feel that way he says i found the answer is that we have to build the house of the lord first and worry about our places second Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and all these things. But there's my career, there's my family, there's my job. How many know your job, your career, your family will be blessed when you put his kingdom first? We used to know that. We used to understand that. But our culture of America, we've lost it. That's why there was all day dinner on the ground because they'd spend all day. How many know it's the Lord's day, not the Lord's two hours? We wonder why we don't have favor, why there's no blessing, there's no increase. When it comes to our finances, we shall give and it shall be given unto us. We sang the song, right? Pressed down, shaken together and running over. That's how God wants to bless us, but we block it. Open up. How many want, not want it to be blocked anymore? You're ready to open up and give God everything. Come on, lift your hands right now. We're going to have a Holy Ghost money prayer right now. Money comes to you. The blessing of God comes to you. The favor of God comes to you as I stand in agreement with you right now. God, if we haven't been faithful to your house, forgive us. Set us free and help us so the blessing and favor of God runs through us right now. It doesn't just come run to us. It runs through us. So what we receive goes through us to reach out and bless and to touch others. It won't always be like it is now, brother, if you'll be faithful to the Lord every day. Every day, God has a plan for you in the name of Jesus. And even though those things have come and tried to attack your family and your finances, God says when the, when the enemy of the Lord comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against them for you. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I don't know what's hit your family this year, but God says no weapon shall prosper against you. Then there's the... There's the myrrh. The myrrh, I had to start with the myrrh before the frankincense because the myrrh is really that's the one I should have started with. It shows us that God has given us the power over death, hell, and the grave. The moment we confess Jesus is Lord, we have eternal life that lives in through us, lives in us. 
how can we be selfish and not share that with other people so they can have that eternal life? So the light of Jesus comes in their eyes. You see the world? You see how glossy-eyed and glazed they are? I don't understand what's happening in this world. Some are so upset by the new president. I've pretty much been upset of the past three presidents, but I'm still going to coast with it. I'm flowing because it's not, not the White House that changes. It's our house. It's a church house. It's God's people. I got a light in my eyes that can't be put out. I see that in most of you as well. But why can't we take the light we have and give it to others? Eternal life is ours. We can trample on the things that the devil brings on us, like serpents and scorpions and bugs under our feet. That's one of the wrap that I have. I wish I'd brought that one with me. I'd wrap the under our feet wrap. You're going to have to, uh, I know, invite me back. Anyway, and so, <laughs> come on, stomp on the devil right now. You know that you're going to live forever. You know you're going to heaven and not hell. You know you've been given victory and you're not in defeat. Come on. Is that all the stomp you got? Come on, stomp it. Glory to God. I want to do my first closing. You have your car keys with you? You have your keys? Am I got your keys? Pull out your keys. I'm not collecting your car. I just want you. <laughs> well, Y'all have been in some front of some strange preachers. Come on, now stomp your feet, shake your keys because you've got the keys to the kingdom and the devil's under your feet. Come on now. That's how you should come to church. I see it just in the way some people drag into church when the saints come dragging in. They just, they just you know, the, the kids are fighting at home. You're trying to get breakfast and food. You're honking outside. It's your husband honking the horn saying, get out of here, we're going to be late. We'll, <laughs> we'll have to sit on the front row. <laughs> There's no other seats. She yells out, you get in here and dress the kids. I'll sit out and honk the horn. And then there's this tension and there's fight. And the, and the kids are fighting in the back seat because they feel the tension. And she's got the lizard lips. and the <laughs> She's hugging the door and he's trying to drive and trying to say, I, I, I just married somebody. And, and, and pull in there into the, into the parking lot. And he lights, grab your Bible, run in and say, praise the Lord. Find my seat. I need a blessing. But you come in with shaking your keys and stomping your feet, knowing who you are as a child of the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And the enemy's under your feet. And he's made you an agent in the FBI. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you're an agent in the FBI. You're a child of the king. The devil's defeated. He's under your feet. God's given you the keys to the kingdom. Now we come in, uh, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. What you shut up. What is that? I don't know where that phrase came from, but it makes no sense to me. You're either a sinner or you're saved. You cannot be a sinner saved. I am not a sinner. Do I make mistakes? Oh, yeah. But am I saved? Yes, I'm redeemed. I'm bought with a price. I am not the tail, I'm the head. I'm not behind, I'm in front. Come on. I'm blessing the city, I'm blessing the field. Some Christians with their false humility wear me out. Prince Charles is the prince over all of Great Britain. He is one of the ugliest dudes to ever serve as a ruler of the world. His ears are as big as Dumbo the elephant. If he caught a good wind in Missouri, he'd fly away with those ears. I mean, but if Prince Charles was invited to Eagle Heights Worship Center, he wouldn't have his head down, try to hide his ears. He'd walk through that door with his head up high and his shoulders back because he knows he's royalty. Shame on us. He is royalty of something of this earth that will not last. But we are royalty, joint heirs with Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords. We are the children of the King. Come on, put your head back. He didn't say, 
you couldn't be fat. He didn't say you had to be skinny. He didn't say you had to be pretty. He didn't say you had to have all your hair. He didn't say you had to have all your teeth. He didn't say you had to just walk just right or talk just right. He said, you accept me. I've made you my child. You are royalty. I've adopted you into the kingdom. I ain't cocky and prideful. I just know who I am. Look at your neighbor, slap him, tell him you know who you are. Tell them they're an agent of the FBI. The enemy's under your feet. You got the keys to the kingdom. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. I love frankincense. I believe God is a God that heals and he changes not. That's in Exodus. And Isaiah, he says, forget not the benefits who saves from all iniquities and heal all our diseases. In Peter, he says, by his stripes you were already healed. Micah says, healing is the children's bread. It's, it's, it's yours. And somebody says, well, I don't know that when those verses in the Old Testament, he was talking about physical healing. And you're wrong. Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 heals the sick. It says, and all were sick. Sick. <laughs> and all were sick were healed. To fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah that says, by his stripes you're healed. And he bore our sicknesses. So it was not just a spiritual healing. It is a physical healing. I'm on my soapbox. I was on the soapbox in the message. I hope you enjoyed that message. But the main point is when they saw the star, they rejoiced. Why? Because he is the giver of the best gift. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. Uh, I wish I had time to show you the healing service we had. People were healed of chronic pain and uh, breathing problems and all kinds of things that day. It was such a great service. And I want God to heal you and touch you today. He has given you these gifts. Like I said, when you see these things, they're a symbol. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold is the favor of God that is yours today if you'll accept Him. Eternal life is yours if you accept Him. That's the myrrh, what that symbolizes. And the frankincense to bring healing to you. By His stripes, you are healed. By His blood, you are saved. There's so many benefits in knowing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's, it's far more than financial uh, rewards. It's, it's far more than even being healed from a pain. It's knowing that we have Him forever. And we can know him in a real way. Would you just say, Jesus, the Christ of Christmas, would you come into my heart? Would you be the star of my life? Would you make me a truly wise man that seeks you every day of my life? I surrender everything and I lay it at your feet just as the wise men laid their gifts at your feet. I lay my life at your feet and I ask you to come in and change my heart and change my life. You know what? He's the answer for you for whatever situation you're going through. I hope you'll know him and you'll know his favor, blessing, and increase. You'll know his healing power. He is the answer. We got a week full of great programs, brand new programs. Sue Ann O'Neill, Miles Holmes, Cecil Todd, Lewis Torres, John Allred, and Randy Plummer that's coming back. They'll be here this week, so stay tuned for some great programs before we go into the new year. Jesus is the answer in your world. The preceding program was brought to you by Kevin Shorey Ministries and our family of friends. 